Hey everybody, it's Phil from OneWell Studio here. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about a brand new amp sim from Blackstar, lovingly crafted by Blackstar as it turns out, and it is called the Blackstar St. James. Now, this is based on the real amp of the real name, which is the Blackstar St. James series, which comes in two varieties. It comes in the EL34 variety and the 6L6 variety, which, as I'm sure you guitar guys know, are just variations of tubes. We're going to take a look at and lovingly go through bit by bit every function in this amp sim. Now, first off, it's important to note that there is a kind of major distinction between the... Uh, the full amp sim, which is the St. James, and how would I say the truncated amp sim, and look up Blackstar, you'll see that there's actually three amp sims in one. But this is deceptive. So you can get the St. James suite, and then you can get either the 6L6 or the EL34 individually as a plugin. You can purchase it individually as a plugin, or you can purchase the suite. And if you purchase the suite, it comes with both, I believe. For me, it did. So here's the thing. If you were to get the individual units, the 6L6 or the EL34, respectively, uh, you would find that you would only have access to, one, the amp you purchased, which makes sense, that's logical, and the cab. You'll notice that the suite has far more options. So the suite itself actually has pre-effects with a compressor, a drive, a chorus, a phaser. Then it goes into the amp, which you can switch between either. You go into the cab rig and you can choose between multiple different cabinets, multiple different microphones, room sizes, room widths, panning. You can turn on off axis on the microphones. You can adjust the levels of these things. There's a lot of power there. Then you can go into the post effects section, which has a flanger, a tremolo, a delay, and a reverb. And then finally, you also have access to an EQ. Now, this EQ is only four bands with, with a high pass and a low pass, but it's still something to consider if you're looking to get uh, fresh tones out of the box without having to go outside the plugin. Now, all of the things have in common a tuner, input and output knobs, you get the preset selection bar, as per usual, you still get access to the settings. You can still go down here and adjust the UI size with this little menu that allows you to choose 50% UI size all the way up to 200% UI size in increments. And the cabs on the individuals are severely limited comparatively. In each of the cabs, if you were to choose the 6L6, for example, you get access to a Royer R121 ribbon microphone up against a St. James 2x12 cab. In the EL34 version, you get a 121 up against a St. James 2x12 cab. However, Mic 2 can only be a 414, but the cab for the EL34 and the 6L6 are different. So if you go to the EL34, cab two is going to be a one by 12. If you go over to the 6L6 version, the only cab you can choose for cab two is a four by 12. So very clearly they're showing you that while it might be the ideal configuration, you're only going to be able to get the two by 12 and the four by 12 tones out of the 6L6 by default and the one by 12 and the two by 12 tones out of the EL34 by default. So consider that when you're choosing the amplifier. It may be that you really like the sound of one head more than the other, but then like the sound of this cab more than the other, and that might be worth getting the suite for you. So you can choose between the two and go about the cab and choose which cabs you want. Let's face it, you may not want a 1x12, you may want a 4x12, but you may really like how the 34 sounds through a 4x12. That's how they get you. So let's start by going through this plugin one by one. Now that you know that each of these has, uh, you know, at the very minimum, the amp, the cab rig, the input with a little gate knob, a mono stereo switch, a tuner, an output, UI, presets, and settings to allow you to revert to defaults. So let's just take the rest of this from the very beginning with just the suite because the suite is really going to have all of the power and it's going to give you all of the tools that you want. So first things first, you'll notice that you've got this logo here. You click on it. You can see what version you're on. You get the copyright date and you get access to an email and the website for the plugin company, which in this case is Blackstar Plugins, which I assume is a subsidiary of Blackstar Amplification Limited. From there, you get access to this preset bar where you can actually go up and down the presets as per your choice, you can choose one. If you go down to this drop down menu, you can import and export. You can search for them. So I can search up 
breakup and you'll get my breakup preset that I saved, the clean breakup, not so clean breakup, so on and so forth. You can heart the different options. So if I really like mine, I can save it as a hearted option and it'll show me when I'm scrolling through. Oh, I'm choosing one that I liked. You can also save new presets. And as always, you can revert to default. Now, interestingly enough, if you were to change any of the parameters, there's actually a little box up here that shows you the last thing you just changed. So for example, it's showing you right now that it goes to amp model 6L6 and amp model EL34 when I switch back to it. Uh, if you change any parameter, it does the same thing. So you can see what the last change you made was, which can be really helpful, especially if you're fine adjusting things and you're like, I want to make it just a little bit more chorus depth and get a nice little readout on it. So as I'm adjusting, I'm looking up in the top right corner, getting 6.4, 6.5 on that pedal. It's really nice. I like it. I dig the granularity of it and it works for every single thing. So you can adjust the noise gate that way, the input. If you were to do anything that actually affects the tone, adjusting the treble, adjusting the middle, bass, reverb, whatever, even changing channels, you get that readout. So it's pretty comprehensive. You can turn off or bypass entire sections and it'll tell you that you just did that. It's pretty nice to be able to see, oh, well, I just did something. What did I do? Right? Pretty cool stuff. As we go on from there, we take a look at the bottom bar, which has the signal chain stuff. You're going to get your input gain, your gate. You're going to be able to switch from a mono to a stereo chain. If you're cranking it too much, it'll turn red to show clipping, which is pretty useful. So you want to keep it at a probably healthy level. The manual actually suggests turning down and clearing the clip indicators until they don't show up anymore, just because you don't want to clip into the plugin. You want that kind of gain to come from the plugin itself, not from driving the plugin too hard on the input, because then you don't have a lot of places to go headroom wise. You have the noise gate, which is just a simple noise gate with a threshold. Thus far, I found that it's actually pretty good, does what it says on the tin. After that, you've got the pre FX chain which allows you to bypass or not bypass, and it's all the pedals before the amp. In serial, you'll notice that it then goes into the amplifier. Everything from the amp then goes into the cab. Everything from the cab then goes into the post effects. And then finally, after post effects, there's the EQ. So you get a lot of information in that signal chain. You get on off, you get the ability to switch between them, take a look, or you don't even have to look when you bypass the rig. Then you have the tuner, which opens up the little tuner window. You can then mute or unmute based on whether or not you want to mute to tune. You get the output, which also allows you to do the clip indicators, super helpful. And then you have the UI size button. So on this button, you can click it, resize the window, make it 150, make it 125, what have you. I had it on 100 at that time, but now I have it at 150 because I feel like it looks easier for you guys to follow along. Let's go to the pre-FX real quick. So on the pre-FX compressor, you have the comp knob. It will adjust the amount of compression. So fully compressed, uncompressed, and then blend will adjust the amount of dry signal that's mixed with the compressed sound. So you could fully compress and then have no blend, right? So that it sounds like... really compressing hard but then you blend in a little dry that way you get a little bit of that nice clean signal in there you have the fast and slow switch so the fast compression is a quick attack time fun if you want to extend some sustain smooth things out and then slow is a slower attack time perfect for accentuating things so it'll really allow you to hear that pick click more compared to bringing up everything and smoothing out the signal hear how the strings actually have more transients when you have that uh, compressor enabled with the slow setting. Up next, we have a nice little drive pedal. Basically, TS mode tightens up the low end and pushes the amp into screaming saturation, which basically means this is a tube screamer mode. And then you have an overdrive, which is going to be that more versatile overdrive sound that you would expect 
from probably like a max on OD or something compared to a TS, which is a tube screamer. So here's the difference between the two at noon. The tube screamer has a tendency to clean up the low end a little bit and push more into the mids, whereas the overdrive is a little bit more fully distributed across the frequency spectrum. But of course, you can adjust tone. So you can get some of that low end back or some of that brightness from the tube screamer in the overdrive vibe if you so choose. We also have a chorus, which I make prolific use of later on. Uh, the chorus is a vibrant kind of chorus pedal based on some specific 80s sounding tones. So you've got a speed knob, which can be synced with this little sync button. So you can choose based on note lengths. You can adjust the width to be really wide, really thin somewhere in the middle, and then the depth. Or you can adjust it based on feel more so than synchronization. The cool thing about this chorus pedal is that it really doesn't feel like you can go too far. Everything it does is actually really musical and doesn't feel like it'll kill your tone which some choruses have a tendency to do. Up next, you have this phaser, which the phaser is uh, also able to be tempo synced. Let's hear what it does on max. So the resonance switch actually adjusts the resonance of the filter, which allows you to make the filter a little bit more peaky. Here, how it's got that meow versus no resonance or low resonance. It feels a little bit less filtered. You can adjust the speed, adjust the width, and adjust the depth. The depth on zero is no different than having the button off. So make sure you actually have the depth up when you're adjusting the tone. and then blend into taste as per usual. So those are all of the pedals. So on the amp page, this is the EL34. On here, you can switch between the two with the big button. On the EL34 side, you get a very clean, dynamic sound, a lot more uh, classic crunch, especially with channel one. So you have the channel select option here, you have the channel select boost, you have the channel boost option, you can adjust the volume. If you're in channel one, it's clean. And the volume acts as the gain. Much like a classic amp would. And gain two and volume two will do nothing. You can then adjust the tone stack with the bass. Mids. Treble which has a lot of power. The reverb. Then you have the power to adjust the power, as in you can switch between 50 watt mode and SAG mode. Very cool stuff. So this is more driving the power of the output stage compared to SAG, which really sucks the power out. You get a totally different feeling from it. So the switch between the channel one and channel two increases the gain stage significantly, which gives it a vintage style crunch. And then the gain knob actually affects it. And it's no longer controlled by volume one, but volume two. Everything else remains the same. You can also switch the power off, but you can't separate standby from power, unfortunately. So you can only really bypass it or you could bypass it from down here. Now, St. James 6L6, 
has a lot more uh, versatility in my opinion. Channel one still has that cleaner gain sound. Volume two and gain two still do nothing because you're on the channel one. Bass, mid, treble. They all have a pretty strong, not super subtle tone stack. The verb is more springy on this one, I think. Unique to this one is that once you go to channel two, instead of getting the boost like you do on the first one, which just gives you more gain on the EL34, Channel 2 has a voice switch, because this one's already a lot more gainy. So what that does is it actually emulates power dampening, kind of like the SAG function does, while also pushing the saturation of the tubes. So you get this really nice chuggy tone. And you get that glassy clang sound that you would expect. So let's go back to the regular breakup tone I had going and I'll show off some of the cab stuff. So one thing that's unique to this amp sim that I believe is that when you choose a cab, you also choose a microphone, but the microphone that it wants to pair with the cab has a recommendation. So it actually tells you this microphone will probably sound best with this cab. So for example, if I were to switch this to a one by 10 or one by 12, it would tell me that the four by the 414 will sound best with it. So let's solo that cab. Let's go to the Artist 15. Switch to the recommended microphone. Well, that sounds kind of thin. Let's switch to the recommended microphone. Artist in 15. Recommended mic is the 414. Artist in 30. Recommended mic's the 160 a ribbon. So you can hear what they're doing. You can also see on here what the recommended mic is when you're choosing the list from the list of cabs. So like the 212, they say sounds best with the 121. The 412 sounds best with the 414. Four twelve A might sound best with the ribbon. Oh, and more specifically, it actually tells you off axis. Same with this one. The 412 Pro B says it sounds best with the 414 with the condenser off axis. So if you're interested in hearing what their exact choices will be, then you might be interested to know that the Ampsim actually gives you a guide when choosing the cab and the microphone on which they best recommend for sound with that particular one. One thing you'll notice is that they probably don't like dynamic microphones that much because they mostly stick to the ribbon, the condenser, and the that's about it because they almost never recommend a 57 which is in my opinion hilarious because i also never recommend a 57 come at me guitar bros but the thing that sounds greatest about this sim is that you can of course change that you don't have to go with what they tell you and it'll still sound good now you notice that there's also a pan here a solo and a mute and a level so you can get a blend. By default, they actually do have it panned slightly out so that the cabs with the microphones actually get a little bit of phasing, which sounds pretty cool. You can make them act as normal IRs more or less by setting the panning to the center, or you could pan them out wide for radically different tones.
then it might help to level match or do some kind of dynamics processing but you can get a wildly varied tone out of it pretty quickly. Now, the one thing about the full version is that both the left and the right side have the same cab selection options, which again, you don't have if you get just the basic one amp or the other VST version. One thing you also get is the option to do small, medium, or large room with varying widths. So this means that the room mics that they used were close, spaced and then very wide and you can choose between those options in a small medium or large room so let's get that going hear how it really narrows when the width is closer spaced pair gives you a little bit more width and then wide is just massive and you can hear the difference in all of the different room types. We went through the microphones, we went through the cabinet types, we went through the mix controls, and we went through the room types. Very fun stuff. I, for one, really enjoy the versatility and the cleanliness of it. You can get a lot of crazy good sounds just out of the amp and the cab. Literally, so simple. A lot of warmth there. Anyhow, on to the post effects page. So from here, you get a flanger. So let's listen to that. You can also tempo sync this. It has a manual switch with high and low options. Now, what that means, you're toggling the range, the range of the sweep. So when you go to high, you've got a higher range flange. versus a lower range flange. So you actually hear the base of the flange switch down to a lower register so it goes instead of so you can give it like a high pitched flange or a low pitched flange. You can sync it, you can adjust the depth. You can adjust the width, make it real mono, super wide and you can adjust the speed to be very slow, up to four bars. Which is one of my favorite styles of flange. So you get some real good stuff out of there. You also get a tremolo. Now, the classic versus harmonic type of tremolo means that you're gonna get either a classic valve biased style tremolo or you're gonna get a modulation based on frequency, which can create a little bit of an additive tone to it. If you sync it, this just does the tremolo thing, right? This creates overtones in the tremolo. You can almost hear it going when it does the harmonic based one compared to the standard where it's just volume. That volume alternation. That can create a very unique style, much like classic pedals would, which is pretty cool. It gives it like a nice wobble. And of course the tempo sync might be necessary unless you just really like vibing. I tend to use tempo sync for everything, but that's just me. So up next, you also have a delay, which is actually fantastic for lead stuff. So check this out. You can tap it, which is super fun. You can sync it with delay. You can adjust the tone of the delay, adjust the saturation of the delay to give it a lot more of like a distortion type of vibe. When you have the saturation set this high, you're getting the signal into the delay engine increased, which creates like an overdrive of just the delay. So depending on how much volume you're pushing into the delay, of course, and how much the mix is, 
you're going to get more saturated feedback. So if I were to set this to like a eighth note delay, hear how smashed that saturation is. So you can really trash up this delay. You can also switch between ping pong, which I like wide and a normal delay. A normal delay being more or less like a, a mono monoral delay compared to wide, which is like stereo and ping pong, which alternates left and right. Really nice for some ambiance. Gotta say, I really like the delay. And lastly, in the post effects channel, you have the reverb, which has a size knob, tone knob, a mix knob, all the things you would expect from a reverb. And you have the option to switch between plate and hall. You don't have that option on the amp itself, so you just get the built-in spring reverb. But if you want to use this post effects pedal, you can get a hall or a plate as well. The plate is gonna be, you know, a typical plate. It's got that airy vibe, and then the hall's gonna be a little bit more dense with uh, more complexity in the tail. And you can get a lot warmer than the plate, and you can turn off the wide switch to give it more mono vibe. It's not gonna sound as big, but it's gonna have phase coherence. You can also blend it in with a stereo guitar track to give it more of like a, a mono stereo image, which can help a lot with mixing. If you feel like your guitars are too disparate, too wide, you just want something up the center to give a little bit of that center phantom image. You can create the feeling of mono depth while also maintaining the stereo aspect of the guitars themselves. And that's a pretty neat trick. I actually really like that. So lastly, we have an EQ, which is based off of something, if you didn't know. Uh, it's based off of an analog piece of EQ. Now, the interesting choice here is that you have a low cut that spans from zero hertz all the way up to 200 hertz. That's a decent amount of low cut. That's pretty good. The high cut goes from 20 kilohertz all the way down to 1000 hertz. So that is a massive range. So you can actually use this. Practically get a telephone effect out of, which I consider a requirement for any amp sim. So if I were to do that here, just for funsies, crank that 2K, cut the lows more. Crank that honky nasal in 3K. Give it that small reverb vibe. Now it feels all nice and telephone-ish, which I'm going to save as Phil obligatory radio FX. Excellent. So I just saved that preset just for fun. So I'm fairly certain that the low end selector switch is a shelf and I'm pretty sure that the high end selector switch is a shelf and then everything in between is a bell. So you really don't get like par full parametric option, but it is four bands of semi parametric EQ and you can turn off each one individually with the power button. So you can bypass each individual band if you'd like. So let's say you're like, oh yeah, that's really warm. And then you want to bypass it to see if it made it better without turning off your bright band and all that other stuff. You can actually go one by one and just turn off each individual EQ band. Eh, too scooped. Too low. Too crunchy. Too airy. And so on. And as you'll notice, as I increase the EQ, it actually doesn't automatically gain correct. So you want to be careful. You're not just getting the loudness effect. It actually pushes the output get stage until it crunches too much. That's something good to know. So now that we've walked through every single aspect of this amp, 
let me show you how it stacks up in real life against a, a you know a mix and we'll go from there so i'll show you each individual sim that i used and the settings as i go through the section for this song called humility is the flesh of life and the gasp of plenum breakup tone Crunch tone. these clean effects. Lastly, so you can get a massive variety of tones out of this, including everything from like super clean, pretty polished, some little classic rock crunch all the way up to like really genty. And what I like about it is <laughs> you can actually get all of that in the plugin without having to mix it much. It's pretty crazy just how versatile this thing is. So if you have any questions about the Black Star St. James that I might be able to answer for you or anything I missed, let me know in the comment section below. If there's any other plugins you want me to take a look at in the future, also please let me know. And in that short period of time. I hope I gave you everything you need to be able to really mess around with it and play with it yourself. If you're interested, maybe download a free trial. I'm not sponsored by the company and I haven't ever really uh, been that into Black Star products, but this is a really solid amp sim that has some really great tones right out of the box. I mean, no matter what you choose to do, it kind of holds your hands for you by giving you some recommendations to hear how they idealized it and how they wanted it to sound. But you can also just swing through and play with it for fun. Or you could turn off the post effects and the EQ and the cab rig entirely and use it with an external IR loader. Like any other amp sim, the fact that you can do that is really good and it allows for a really nice degree of freedom. So if you liked that, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe because I've got more on the way. And thank you very much. I've been Phil from One Wall Studio thanking you and signing off. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.